Bibles, Psalm 118, Psalm 118, verse 21. Is that you, Holland? Is that Anna? Holland, my eyes from here. Holland, good to have you here. Amen. Love you guys. Sherman, happy birthday. Ooh, I didn't know you were that young. 48 is young. You don't think so? It's the oldest you've ever been, isn't it? <laughs> Somebody said, if I'd known, if I'd have known I lived this long, I took better care of myself. Can I tell you that's a lie? You wouldn't have. You'd have still had fun, amen, enjoyed life. Matter of fact, some of the guys that were out yesterday said, we did not know this place existed, Camp Holy Wild. We had no idea. And uh, they said, we go places that are quite boring. And uh, this place has been amazing. And of course, we had Jody and, and Brent with us the week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, from uh, Columbus, Mississippi, Pastor Jody. And they said, uh, we asked him, I said, it just happened. I said, y'all don't shoot guns? And they said, well, what kind? <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, I bet we shot eight or ten different calipers on Wednesday. I mean, they, they just kept, they, their mind was blown. David bringing out guns, I was bringing out guns from the Old West all the way up to, to now, and we just shot and had so much fun. And, and I think about people that, you know, one, one gentleman looked at us, and he walked around in the cafeteria, and he saw all the, all the animals that were in there that had been a taxidermy, and he said, I have, he, he was my age, he said, I've never been hunting. And I just had a sympathy feeling come over me. What a blessing we've got here in Southeast Texas. Amen. To go hunt our own food if we want, whether it be in the woods or Kroger's. <laughs> Amen. It's just a blessing we got. I don't know what goes on in California and Pennsylvania, but I'll tell you what we do here. I took some boys from, matter of fact, the last couple of groups from uh, California is here from Yuba City. Uh, during Hurricane Harvey, I let one of them shoot a, a pig. James, and it blew, him, it blew his mind just to get to shoot a pig. And then, then uh, during her, Imelda, I let a guy shoot a, a, a buck. And man, they were just blown away. And I thought, well, that's so sweet. Hey, man, just California people are so easy to make happy. <laughs> are you comfortable? Let's get to word, guys. I got a few minutes to share the word with you. You know, I'm kind of hemmed in in the morning services because I get, get to the other one. But it dawned on me recently the importance of having good days. Because my days just click by, click by, click by so fast, and you never know what a day is going to hold. It is going to be up to you and how your day is going to be, and that my days are over so quickly, i got to learn to make the most of my time. And have you ever been asked at the end of the day, how was your day? Hey, man, people ask you that. Let me tell you, if you would have asked me yesterday, how, at the end of, right before I went to bed, how was your day? I would have told you how bad I backslid. Hey, Amen. I have been doing so good. I've been eating hamburgers without bread, Tommy. I've been trying to just kind of set back. You know, I got to get a little weight down. I, I got I got some scooter riding to do now that the camps are over. You know, I'm just trying to do the right thing here and trying to get because I've done so well over the last year and a half. And so I, I told, and so, but somebody posted on Facebook, put my name on it, so you know I'm going to look. You throw my name on it, I'm going to look, see what you're talking about. This here. Uh, um, Coconut cream pie blue bell. Now, I'm going to tell you, I had a really good day going yesterday until David brought a half pint of that coconut cream pie blue bell into my house. Well, I skimmed off about a half a bowl there and went down set. And <sighs> Before the night was over, I done had two more bowls of that. And I need somebody to come rescue me. I got about three-fourths of a half gallon left. If you want it, come and get it because I need some help because I don't have the, the willpower to handle. I walk by the freezer and I hear it going, woo-hoo, <laughs> woo-hoo-hoo. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I've had good ice cream. I told my pastor, he said that's actually a red line around Illinois where he lives that Bluebell can't get in. I said, sir, if they had Bluebell where you at, you'd be 400 pounds right now. You don't want Bluebell. Amen. That, that stuff right there will hurt you. <laughs> Hallelujah to good days. Can I get an amen? Yes. So to summarize it, you know, most people say, well, have you had a good day or have had a bad day? You know, there are people, honest to God, I never ask them how their day is because I know they're going to tell me and I really don't want to hear it. Amen. So it's just, it's their nature. But Psalm 118 verse 21 says, I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. 
The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. You'll see that verse also in the New Testament. Speaking of Christ, he was rejected. He came to his own, his own received him not. Verse 23 says, the Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, save us. O oh Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we will bless you. So the house is important. Those who come from the house are important. The blessings are important. But say this verse with me, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Say it again. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a proclamation, but it's also something to adjust your attitude because we find that good days don't just happen. you got to make a good day happen. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. I ask your blessing upon it. Lord, I thank you for God days and good nights in Jesus' name. Everyone sit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. As a matter of fact, that's the title of my message. Everybody say, have a God day, God day. and a good night. So if this is the day the Lord has made, it's a God day. Can I get an amen? Amen. The devil didn't make this day. God made this day. He gave us this 24 hours. This eight, eighth day of August came from God. As many of you didn't think, amen, Sherman, you were going to make it, but you got here to the eighth day of August. It's a God day. I'll tell you that. A day is from one sunrise to the next sunrise. It, God made. It's appointed. Amen. God made this day. It just, he, he, he set it in motion back when he created the earth, and it cycled around, and when it came, he made it, he appointed it. And when your day is good, it's far easier to, re, it's far easier to rejoice and be glad than when you're having a bad day. And when you're having a bad day, you've got to make yourself rejoice. You've got to remind yourself, you know what, no matter what life throws at me today, I've, I've got to have a, a better day. I've got to adjust my attitude. So the question is, are, are days, can you make a day good? I've said this forever. If I've had a good day, it's my fault. Amen. I can't allow you to make me have a bad day. I got to decide I'm going to have a good day. It's going to be a good day. Amen. So I believe it is. If a day is from the sunrise to the next, then let us consider the breakdown of the day. There are three parts to it. There's morning, there's midday, and there's evening. And if you can ever learn to govern these parts of your life, amen. Some people just say, just give it a day. But sometimes you've got to break your day down. I get up in the morning. It's the hardest part of my day is the mornings because of the getting this body moving. My spirit's excited. I get up and I say, good morning, Lord, instead of good Lord morning. Amen. I'm excited about getting up and getting going. Amen. But, but, but getting the body moving, it's a little bit harder. Psalm chapter 5, verse 1. Amen. The morning is what you wake up to. It's the first thing you want to do when you wake up. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shall you hear in the morning, Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto you, and will I look up. So when you get up in the morning, and I'm not telling you pastor does this all the time or anybody else around you, but this is your, your drive. This is a, a thing that can help you out. If you can just get up in the morning and let God hear your voice. Amen. Open your mouth and say, good morning, Lord. I love you today. Help me. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It just has to be you talking to him. Let God hear your voice. Direct your voice. Put your life in order through prayer. Look up. Amen. Many times if we're not careful in life, in, in what I'm asking you to do, is learn with me as, I, I'm, as I'm learning. 40 years into this, I'm still learning. A consistency. You know, I, I, you know what I do in the morning? I get up and I turn the coffee pot on. I'm very consistent about that. But how consistent are we? You know, if we brush our teeth, how consistent are we about getting up and saying, Lord, I love you today. Amen. I want you to help me make this a good day. Instead of waiting till life turns sour and throw what is called, we've always called these Hail Mary passes. Amen. A Hail Mary prayer. Amen. That, that something's got to happen. A Hail Mary pass. But I remember, I'm a college football nut. You know that, Roll Tide. Amen. Doug Flutie, 1984, long time ago. Boston College versus Miami. They're supposed to lose. Doug Flutie's this tall. He can't even see over people. Amen. And he literally just took the ball. It was right, no time left. It, the, the rationale is that the pass was thrown under such desperate circumstances that could only be completed with the help of divine intervention. That's why they called it a Hail Mary pass. Amen. Amen. In other words, it's throwing up a prayer. And sure enough, somebody called it in the end zone. We've seen this happen a few times with the Cowboys when they accidentally win. Amen. So... <laughs> 
This has become our habit that prayer is something we generally associate with desperation. You know, I depend on my resources, and this is our problem. We depend on our resources, our talents, our game plan to the moment of crisis and desperation. Then my human cleverness and mortal strength has failed me. Then when all other options are gone, that's the time we yell, Help, Lord! Help me, Jesus! And we throw up a prayer. Now, I'm not telling you that's wrong. But I'm telling you, if you've lived a life of consistent prayer, you wouldn't have to fall into a panic every time something happened. Amen. Desperate people pray. People in foxholes pray. Life, you know, when we begin to lack oxygen to breathe or a man falling reaches for something to grab hold of, we pray. Many of us fall into a pattern where the only times we pray are the times that we're prompted by crisis or pain. Amen. We need to praise God when things are good. Praise God when things are bad. We need to pray when it's good. We need to pray when it's bad. Amen. If I'm going to have a God day and a good night, amen, i got to learn how to keep on praying. So in most ordinary moments, we're not convinced that prayer really changes things. I want to throw you a verse out. As a matter of fact, I quoted this verse to my pastor this morning, and he said, I mentioned to him, he said, tell me where it's at. I'm going to preach on that this morning. I love when we, you know, when I'm, try, when I'm talking to my pastor in the morning on the phone coming here that we bounce ideas off each other. So that was the idea I gave him. You know what he gave me? This is what he told me. I hate buttermilk. This is what I got out of my conversation this morning. I hate buttermilk. He said, I really don't like lard. I'm not fond of flour because it goes everywhere. But when you put a little heat on it, give me some biscuits. And I said, oh, I know exactly what you're saying. Because sometimes life throws buttermilk at you and flour at you and lard at you. But if you can get a little heat in the situation, God can take all them ingredients and make you into a good biscuit. Come on, Jesus. Where's my next verse here? There it is, Revelation 8. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Now, I was told that's because the women hadn't got there yet, but I don't know. And I saw the seven angels who stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. Now, that, that would be something that you'd hold up. It's got the, the uh, incense in it, all right? Amen. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. Now, I'm just going to throw this at you. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of the saints, went up before God from the angel's hand. I was thinking about this yesterday. Out on the ranch, there was thunder. Y'all hearing these summer thunder boomers? I mean, it'll wake you up. They're loud. They're cracking through the sky. Amen. Then it says, then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth, and there came pills of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and earthquake. The response to the prayers of the saints is this, and I want you to pay attention to this. When you hear the thunder, when you see the lightning, when the earth shakes, don't get scared. Know that the saints are praying. Amen. And they're connecting. Amen. It's connected in heaven. And the angels are throwing down reminders. Somebody's praying for you. When Tuesday night goes off, brother, on Wednesday ought to be thunders. Hallelujah. Something thunders. Something happened when I pray. Hey, it was you that made it thunder, wasn't it? Amen. It was you that made the lightning flash. Amen. Some little granny somewhere agreeing with another granny, and we got stuff going on. Can I get an amen? amen? So all of heaven stops to the prayers of the saints. Your prayers and mine, they rise before God. This is what I'm saying. I'll get phone calls. I was telling Pastor Mike this morning, I really don't like this idea of being a spiritual advisor. People call me and ask me for advice. I'm going to, I'm going to share the message of the Word of God. And I hit you and hit you. If it don't, come back next Sunday. We'll get you eventually. Amen. But the bottom line is this, that when we learn to pray, when we learn to do this book, amen, God moves. We literally can move his hand. And I, I'll get a bad report. The phone will ring. And this has happened to me. You know, Friday I was with a family who's 57-year-old. Uh, this young man's 57-year-old mother died, died in her sleep. Goes to our church at another campus. I got a funeral Wednesday with her. I got a funeral today after church. Bad things are hard things. Let me say this. Hard things happen. They're not bad things. It's life. I had a lady call me. She said, Pastor, this doctor said that 40% of his patients die when something like this happens. I said, darling, 100% of his patients die. We all going to die. Amen. The wind's up to God. 
Hallelujah. So hold on to your faith. Keep praying and believe for some lightning and thunder. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Praying in the genesis of, your, genesis of your day will affect the rest of the revelation of the day. Psalm chapter 30, verse 5. For his anger endures but a moment. And in, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So you got to look for joy. Psalm 92, 1. It is a good thing, good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Psalm 143, 8. Cause me to hear your loving kindness. That word loving kindness is the word grace. Amen. In the morning. For in thee do I trust Cause me to know thy way wherein I walk, for I lift up my soul unto you. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. This I recall to my mind. I make myself think about this. Therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. <laughs> God should have burned us up a long time ago. Amen. He should have just went ahead and dealt with us. But no. God said, you know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Every morning his mercies are new. John chapter 8, verse 2, in the morning. It happened in the morning. Amen. And early in the morning he came again to the temple, to church. And all the people came unto him. He sat down and he taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst or in the middle, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Stop a minute. How do you know she was taken in the very act unless you set it up? And where is the man if she was caught in the act? Well, let's move on. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? They said this tempted him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground as though he heard him not. Have you ever, though you heard him not moment? Have you ever had a though you heard him not moment? When somebody just says something and you realize, oh, they're trying to corner me in. They're trying to put me between a rock and a hard place. They're trying to set me up to say something that I should. They, they're going to take my preaching and use it against me. As though he heard them not. So then they continued asking him. He lifted up himself and he said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one being at the eldest, even unto the last. So the oldest, with a stone in his hand, dropped his stone. What was Jesus writing in the sand? I have to believe he wrote the sin of that eldest guy in the sand. He didn't just, just wrote it, and the guy looked down and saw it. Drunk, dropped his stone. Then he wrote the, the sins of the next guy. Glutton, dropped his stone. Got down to the next guy thief been stealing out of the coffers he walks away and they all begin to leave amen because they realized they all had sinned and then jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman he said unto her woman why are those 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 people that came here to accuse you where are the preachers that tried to accuse you where are the self-righteous that tried to accuse you where are the people that acted like they had no sin where did they go and she said no the, the, where did they came to condemn you she said lord they, they all gone no man amen and he said unto her neither do i go and sin no more verse two early in the morning early in the morning when's his mercy's good they should have never tried jesus in the morning Amen. They should have never messed with him in the morning. Because in the morning, his mercies are new every morning. And he looked at her and he gave her mercy. Amen. How am I going to have a God day? I got to start my day off by dropping the rock in the morning. I can't live with unforgiveness in my heart. Unforgiveness, my friend, against somebody is like drinking rat poison, hoping the rat will die. Amen. You can't do it. You just got to let it go. Got to leave them alone. I got to drop the rock. I got to get on with my life. I got to remind myself, I too have sinned in my life. Amen. Midday, that's what you walk in. John chapter 9, verse 1, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. His disciples asked him, Master, who did this? Who sinned? What a theology to have, believing that if you have a physical ailment, somebody sinned in your life. 
You know, if you're wearing glasses, you got sin in your life. Just want to throw it out over there. <laughs> if you ain't wearing glasses, you got sin in your life. If you're losing your hair too early, you got sin in your life. Amen. If you walk with a limp like me, you got sin in your life. Amen. Something's wrong. He's blind from birth. Who sinned? Was it his mother or his father? Hmm. And his disciples asked, Master, who did? And Jesus answered, neither. Neither. This man, neither this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I got to work the works of him that sent me while, while it's day, while it's midday. Amen. I got to take care of my day. The night comes so no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Amen. Of course, Christ healed this man. Amen. It set him on his way. You know, and, and it's, it's an amazing thought when, I, when I'm reading Scripture and I'm walking through it that I realize how much our theology affects our day to life. If you, I believe his mercies are new every morning. Let's take that as theology and start every day off forgiving one another. Amen. Let's just do that because that's good Bible. Hallelujah. And let's move through our day and realize Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So the day, he said, it is day, the time between sunrise and sunset, to work, to be engaged in. To men. Work is not a bad word. Amen. Amen. You know, I mean, I mean people that retire and they work harder after they retire than when they were working. Amen. That's good stuff, man. Hallelujah. So it's important to understand work is not a bad thing. God made you to work. Amen. He set you up for it. The Amplified says, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus. That means born again, that we may do those good works which God predestined or planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them. In other words, live in the good God life, which he re uh, prearranged and made ready for us to live. When I'm on the tower, when I'm out there on that 40-foot tower, we're hooking people up, and I'm sweating, you know, I look over at David or whoever's on the tower with me, I look down to see the guys running. I remind myself, God prearranged this day for me to be up here. I mean, I don't argue with when, when I'm when I'm mowing the grass. I don't argue with God. God prearranged, and I found out that you got X amount of time in a day. And if you don't, if you can fight that enemy of procrastination and decide, you know what, I got to get this done. Yesterday, in just a span of a little bit of time, I made up my mind. I got two of our trailers out at the ranch. Um, what's the word for them? I'm getting tags for them, so I got them uh, inspected, and I washed my car all before 12 o'clock. They said, that's crazy. I mean, I had, why, why, you might, why does that matter? Because I had one hour to do it in. But I had my midday, and I got to get something done. Amen. I got to make sure, because for 10 years, I've been driving around on, in illegal trailers. <laughs> and eventually, I'm, I'm going to get bit in the butt. I just know it's going to happen. So I got to get this trailers done. Amen. I'm, thank you. Thanks for the amen. And you understand where your pastor's at. All right. So let me start closing up here real, again. While you sleep. While you sleep, Psalm 63, 3, because your loving kindness, your mercies, your grace is better than life, my lips will praise you. Thus will I bless you while I live. I lift up my hands in your name. You know, when we lift hands, and I don't mention this a lot to you in here, church, but we, we're not a denomination. We're the little country church full of believers in Christ that are being discipled to be more like him one day be like Christ. That's our goal. Amen. Because of that, we just look at the Bible and it says lifting up your hands. Some of you think that's a Pentecostal thing, a charismatic thing, because you were raised either not in church or in another type of church. That, that's a Bible thing. The lifting up of hands is a surrendering moment. Amen. I, I, I learned this long before I got born again. Amen. I remember it several times when a police officer pointed the gun at me and my hands went up in the air. It was just an automatic response to surrender. I just surrendered. I bet I just surrendered. I, I, I remember the words assumed the position. I knew exactly what ha was happening. And I knew at that moment he was searching me. And then I read Psalm 51, search me, O God, and know if there be any wicked way in me. And I realized, you know, this officer was just simply doing the things of God. <laughs> Amen. So in life, I have learned, I have learned that the lifting of hands is not a bad thing. Don't get nervous about it. I know some of you, you know, you're a little nervous about it. You think if you do that, something's going to happen to you. Yeah, something's going to happen. You're going to get set free. Come on. Amen. Sometimes, and I don't mean that in a mean, condemning way. I just I think sometimes you got to start here. You know, and then you get here. Amen. You just start. It may, may take you a couple of months. Amen. But eventually, that hand will come on up. And then it's, 
It's going to turn out toward him. Thy loving kindness is better than life. I'll lift up my hands. I'll praise you. Sometimes you'll turn your hand in and say, God, I just want to catch whatever you're giving to me. Amen. And sometimes you got one this way and one this way. Listen, I learned this during worship. I close my eyes a lot. They, I, I'm not looking to be entertained. I, mean, I, I, know, I know that's Tony singing. That's Cindy singing. That's Josiah singing. Joseph singing. You know, it's jo you know back on the There's a time I opened my eyes, you know. I, I did, I did uh, Tuesday night when Richard was up here playing the drums. Because seriously, that was entertainment to me. That was some incredible uh, music. But then there are times that I just got my eyes closed. And I can't tell who's around me or what you're doing. I don't get upset and mad. And I just got my eyes closed. Amen. My hands are lifted. And I'm surrendering to God. It says here in the evening time, when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, because you've been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. I'm going to have a good night. Psalm 92, 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, for to sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to show forth your loving kindness in the morning, your faithfulness every night. Psalm 127, verse 2. In vain you rise up early and you stay up late, toiling for food to eat. He grants sleep to those he loves. Yeah. Last night, I, you know, I, I studied this, and then last night I practiced it. As I laid my head down on the pillow, I have a hard time going to sleep sometimes. Man, I just, and I hate it. I hate it because that's like I'm wasting time. I, I want to be asleep by now. And I laid down last night. I said, Lord, tonight visit me in my, in my dreams. Let your angels come in and talk to me. Amen. In my dreams. People, I dream in color. And so I, I will see people in my dreams. I'll call them the next day or check on them. Because they're in my dreams. I will see people who have passed away years ago in my dreams. Dreams are a powerful thing. Listen to what Oswald Chambers, this great theologian, said. He said, sleep is God's celestial nurse who croons away our consciousness and God deals with the unconscious life of the soul in places where only he and his angels have charge. As you retire to rest, give your soul and God a time together and commit your life to God with a conscious peace for the hours of sleep and deep and profound developments will go on in your spirit, your soul, and your body by the kind creating hand of our God. Then he says sleep recreates. The scripture indicates that sleep is not meant only for recuperation of a man's body, but that there is a tremendous furtherance of spiritual life during sleep. One scripture I read talks about God works while we're sleeping. In other words, if I can just go to sleep, God take care of the situation. I can't control it. I can't change it. But I can pray and bring down lightning and thunder. Come on. Come on. Now, I want you to think of that next time you hear the lightning and thunder here in southeast Texas. Somebody's praying. Amen. Don't get scared. and Run. Stand out there with your hands lifted and say hallelujah. I just joined the prayers here. Psalm 118, say it with me again, would you? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Lord, you give everybody the gift of a day. It's the most valuable thing we got. T-I-M-E, time. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would cause us to stop wasting it. That we'd use it on our kids and our grandkids. That we would reach toward our parents, reconnect with them. God, I ask you to help us to use our mornings to start off with a thank you, Jesus, in our prayer time. And just begin to talk to you. God, it doesn't have to be religious, we know, but your mercies are found there. Help us drop the rock in the morning. And as the midday goes and we meet people that are blind to you, help us remind ourselves that it, it just like we were. And God, when people are blind, they hear well. So help us to speak kindness to them. God, I ask for your blessing upon this house as we prepare even through this day. And as we lay down to sleep tonight, that we'll have a good night's rest. And you'll visit us in our dreams You'll give us purpose. You'll give us a reason to keep on going. You'll remind us that the next day that comes, you will make it for us. 
And whatever time we got in those 24 hours, that you get the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe I'll have a God day and a good night. Amen. You start pro proclaiming that to people. Yeah. When you say when you say God day instead of a good day, you're going to have their attention right then. Then you're going to be able to say, well, this is the day the Lord's made. Amen. He made this day for us. Science didn't make this day. I'm struggling with science. Struggling with science. I used to not struggle with them, but I'm struggling with them the last year and a half. Science has bothered me. Amen. Science is trying to figure this thing out. Science can't even figure out if we got a male or a female. I don't know how they're going to figure out if we got what we got going on right now. Amen. I'm just looking forward to the day when all this is behind us. In the meantime, pray for one another. Pneumonia, COVID, cancer, diabetes, they're serious things. Amen. Pray for one another. Amen. I, I think there has to be a sense of sympathy, and particularly in some of us preachers, we've been a little hard on folk. But the, the bottom line is, I, God, I'm just going to trust you. I just got to trust you through this. I'm going to love people and trust God. Yes. Love people and trust God. The secret sauce to getting through life without getting bitter. Amen. I'm just going to trust you. Amen. If you need to tie their offer an envelope, they're in front of you. I got to trust God that this house learns to tithe, learns to give. Amen. Many of you do. Many of you still struggle with that. Honor God with your giving. Amen. Honor God with your giving. You do that first. I promise you God will bless the rest. He just does that. He's good like that. Amen. I trust him for my salvation. I trust him with my finances. I trust him with my friends. Amen. I trust him with my family. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because God said, if you need an envelope, get the buckets ready. David's going to share a few announcements with you. Amen. I'm going to proclaim this with you. So first you see the envelope. And what's important is that before I came to church today, I done wrote my tithe out. Before I ever got here. I ain't even got to think about it. I ain't even got to think that, okay, Pastor Jerry, if you preach really good, I'll give more on my tithe. I didn't even have to think about that. I already wrote my tithe out. Now, when I really preach good, I give myself an offering at the next service. <laughs> Amen. I might give myself an offering today. Hallelujah. Everybody good with that? So I give myself a little tithe and offering. So I say, that's up to you and how you deal with this, but, I, but my tithe is to honor God. Amen. And we want to make sure we honor him. Hallelujah. As we give today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom.